No rest for the wicked. So far. Stop. Oh. oh, one more. And stop. Oh god, oh god, many inch mistake! Oh, good dodge. Stop! Easy. Oh, nice. That's a solid little tutorial, boss. And he drops a big sword, oh, hopefully, big right? Corpse smeared Corpse blade. Smeared I hate blade. that so much! Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a oh, name, isn't it? Oh, so good. Well, mostly. Hello, my fellow Serim, and how are you finding your time on the island so far? I have been pretty much playing Wicked since the second early access dropped, and I have thoughts. Of course, we were lucky enough to get to play it a little bit early a while ago, but that was essentially everything up until uh, Mr. Ton, and there is a lot more going on now, and I have experienced a lot more now. And ultimately, it's going to boil down to two main points. The first being, this is a seriously fun, unique experience that's immersive, visually stunning, and brimming with potential. Two, there is a few big, stern issues that need resolving if it is ever going to reach said potential. And while this little talk is going to be spending a lot more time on the negatives than the positives, I want to stress that that both A, isn't representative of the game as a whole, where by far and away the majority is just kind of awesome, and B, if it wasn't for how much I do love the core of what's here, then I suddenly wouldn't be spending the time trying to really dig deep into what can be done to make it even better, as after all, this is early access, and that's the point of it. To take feedback from us, the players, to implement changes that make sense to make it a better game for its eventual release. A lot of companies do very much hide and kind of misuse the early access system and essentially release a game they don't plan on really changing and if there's any criticism go, whoop, it's early access, whoop doo -doo -doo -doo. but that's not what it's actually for. I found uh, this uh, review to be quite a good example of what I'm talking about. It's almost paradoxical in how it's put across. The bread has all the right ingredients, but it needs way more time in the oven. It seems like we are the testers. And yeah, that that is that is that both the, that's exactly that, that's the entire point. Just look at something like Subnautica, an incredible game that looks nothing today like it did when it first launched in early access because they implemented, changed, altered, added so much based on us, the players. And that is very much what Moon Studios are setting out to do. That is what they have said. And there is no reason to distrust that from their track record so far. There are major updates planned. There are tweaks already in the works. Honestly, early access for this kind of game is kind of perfect because everyone that wants to wait for the perfected end product can and should do so. You are under no compulsion to spend your hard-earned money on something that isn't finished yet, which this isn't. But if you do like it, you believe in it, you think it already looks good enough, you can get in and your voice can be heard and you can be part of the many that will come together to make it what it can be. And this game needs it. The dev team have put the building blocks in place here, but there is so many systems that need fine balancing based on how they feel for a player that without getting, well, thousands of players to have a go and put in their thoughts, you're never going to get there. This might be one of the best use cases for early access I've actually seen, and we'll touch on a lot of why that is throughout this sort of early review, talk, criticism, etc. And it would be naive to not think that they are closely monitoring the player response so far, with a mind to address what needs addressing. 
So what does need addressing? Well, first and foremost, I do want to at least touch on the good that I uh, touched on just a little bit earlier. The actual car, as I said, is brilliant here. The world, how it's represented, the feel of it, the visual of it, the atmosphere, it is everywhere permeating through everything. It's a one of those rare games to me where just being in game and existing there is an incredibly satisfying experience. The combat is weighty, impactful and challenging and I adore that. And I have seen a lot of people upset at the difficulty of the combat, that the stamina is too punishing, that enemies aren't getting staggered enough, that they can't get past even small groups and I can't really speak for that because I found the game pretty damn easy. Honestly, like not in a way that it's too easy. I can see the difficulty. I'm just incredibly experienced in this type of thing and it just kind of clicks for me. But I can totally objectively see why this could be probably over the top brutal for a lot of people. I have uh, died a handful of times, but it's been kind of fine for the most part. I do think there is a learning curve here, and I would so far caution that things are in the right place. If they want it to be brutal, gritty, it is, and I don't think there is any mechanical flaw with the combat. I think it just needs a bit of time to be mastered, and it is very satisfying when it is, and the actual build power that unlocks and grows as you level, get more gear, more runes, gems, actually put together a playstyle and a set, you will grow in power massively, and that changes the dynamic, and it makes it incredibly satisfying as that starts to happen. Getting uh, your teeth kicked in by every enemy to begin with makes that moment late game where you're absolutely devastating so much more worth it and I am someone that really enjoys that sort of rags to riches difficulty curve which I think really is going on here exploring for the most part is rewarding and fun the major boss fights are appropriately intimidating and fist pumpingly yes, when you get them down the actual structure of the progression through the world the story woven in the cutscenes Everything is just kind of there. If this was a straight-up Souls-like, we'd all be very much chuffed right now. But it's an ARPG, at least that's what it is marketed as. And I think, ironically, a lot of the ARPG side of things is what's actually getting in the way of the Souls-like side of things from being as fun as it could be. Because, to me, everything in this game that I could point to and go, yeah, that's Soulsy." is actually exemplary. And because of that, the game, the experience, everything that is here so far on a raw level is just really fun. Like, it is enjoyable, it is a good time, and I very much recommend you give it a go for that reason. With the mind that it will improve and change over time, I wouldn't blame anyone for waiting, but make no mistake, what is here is worthwhile experiencing, it is unlike anything else, and it's really cool to see. Ironically, because it's unlike anything else, is where it's going to have and is having teething problems. Namely, that AIPG Souls-like fusion. As I said, everything Souls-y, pretty much on point. The ARPG side of things, however, is definitely a little bit more rough around the edges, at least for me. So let's talk about the couple things that I really kind of want to see tweaked here. The first, and this is the biggest, by far and away the biggest, oh my god the biggest, is the negative feedback loop of failure needs to be addressed, removed, fundamentally changed. What do I mean? Well, there is no issue with the game being difficult. I have no problem when a boss beats me into the ground 50 times for me to eventually kill it on the 51st and feel so good about that. That is just perfect. And I imagine if you are into this kind of thing like I am, you agree. The issue is when you die, when you reach a failure state in a game, the one thing that should never happen is that death, that failure should make it harder to then succeed on your next attempt. And that is what is going on here, and it doesn't mesh. 
The reason is, the only way to heal as of yet is by eating food. Either raw ingredients that you gather around the place or dishes that you cook together after learning the recipes. While you have a supply of food, that's no problem. It acts as your health potions, it's got a cooldown so you can't spam and abuse it, you've got to time the animation in combat to not be interrupted, that's all good. But you use food while fighting a boss, the boss kills you, you respawn, that food is gone. You now have a choice. Do you go back and attempt it again, or do you farm more food? Let's say you go attempt it again, and again, and again. Eventually, with every death, your supplies run dry, you are completely drained of resource, and you now have the biggest choice. Do I try and beat this boss perfectly flawlessly without taking more than a health bar's worth of damage? Which isn't going to happen, especially early when you're getting loose to this. There is some punishing encounters here. And honestly, the system feels like you are intended to trade a few blows, especially with how enemies and their respawning functions. Or do you now go farm food and resources to cook into more dishes to then have another go at the boss, teleporting away from the level, the dungeon, the area, going on a little foraging trip, and then teleporting back and having another go? Both those options, fighting it with no healing or going on a healing farming trip, suck. The first removes the intended balance of the encounter and makes it way more difficult because you're supposed to have healing, that's what it's balanced around. And the second is a needless, time-consuming chore that adds an extra, like, weird break between encounters. It kind of gets in the way. You're no longer locked in. You're not processing the fight, having these attempts, learning. You're having this forced break to farm mushrooms and herbs. And I ultimately understand what they are going for here. They want the world to feel alive in that sense. They want it to be gritty and dark and difficult and you have to fight for everything, scrounge those resources, rest at the camp, make your food and keep it going. But that doesn't work in a Souls-like setting. It works in a more softer RPG, ARPG setting where things aren't as punishing. But imagine if in Dark Souls, if every time you used an Estus Flask, etc., the equivalent in whichever one you choose, right, you can't get another one back unless you go literally farm resources and craft it. So you don't respawn with your full uh, roster of healing flasks, you use them slowly throughout many deaths and then have to go on a little trip to get more. It just really is a shame that that's the case and it has this uh, unnecessary level of frustration for no benefit. It's not inherently enjoyable, enriching or enhancing in any way to have to consistently, constantly farm your supply of food against bosses specifically. It works in the world. Enemies don't respawn when you're initially clearing a level. If you kill two out of four enemies in a group, you come back after dying, there'll just be two left. They will respawn eventually after a couple days when events move forward. They will respawn as different enemies in different locations. Previous areas really do change and it feels great and it's fun to re-explore. That's all well and good. So when you're doing that, if enemies don't get to respawn, then yeah, you don't get to come back with more healing and, you know, that kind of works but against bosses attempting them over and over, it really does get frustrating. There needs to be a system in place that prevents that negative reinforcement loop of every death to a boss becomes harder to then reattempt it because you have less healing and you get closer and closer to that critical point of either fight the boss with no healing or go farm healing. You can also buy it, but then you have to farm money and money is precious very early on too. I realize I've spent a lot of time harping on about this, but it is genuinely the single biggest issue I have with the entire experience so far, the food economy. When you die to a boss and respawn, you either need to have your inventory reset to what it was when you walked into the boss arena, or there needs to be a resource that is your standard set of heals that replenish whenever you respawn. They don't need to be huge, they don't need to be powerful, they don't need to be a lot of them, but you should never find yourself in a situation where you can have zero healing without going to gather more healing. So, that's very much that. Then, to add to healing, when you run out of your current dish, 
it will default to a random ingredient in your inventory instead of another cooked dish. Basically, you've got your food that heals you for nearly all your health, that's all well and good, but then when you run out mid-boss fight, if you have other food that heals you lots, it doesn't automatically go to it. It'll go to, like, a mushroom that doesn't essentially heal you for anything at all. It's tiny, and you're like, oh, shit. You have to go into your inventory and equip a different healing dish to then heal properly. And the game doesn't pause while you do that. Which means you essentially can't do that because you'll get pounded into the ground by the boss while you do it, especially on the harder, faster ones later on in the game. So, a simple little tweak that needs to happen is when you run out of your current stack of food, it needs to default to your next highest health restoring food onto your bars as a simple measure, just a little frustration to be avoided there. After that, the next big main mechanical issue, and it really is just this and the food thing, is the durability system. So when you get hit, when you take damage, when you die, your weapons and armor will lose durability. When they reach zero, they can't be used, and you have to pay money to repair. Outside of it costing quite a lot of money to repair gear, relative to how much you earn early on, which can feel a little bit oppressive, this really, I think, doesn't contribute meaningfully to the experience. I understand what the goal is. You're exploring a level, right? Enemies don't respawn, so eventually, if there was no way to force you to go back to town, you would just clear every level easily by virtue of attrition. You can always farm more heals if you need, and you just throw yourself repeatedly at packs of enemies until they die. Doesn't work with bosses, of course, but generally exploring-wise, you could do that. So durability comes into play, and eventually all your equipment is broken and you have a choice. Use other worse equipment and weapons that aren't as good, not as powerful, you're not as experienced with their movesets, or return to town and get things repaired, and in doing so, you risk the enemies coming back now that you've actually fully left the zone and some time has passed, and then you're kind of back to it. Okay, in theory, yeah, that works, and with it being technically an ARPG, that's why it's being marketed as a durability on equipment makes sense. That's what happens. You die enough, you have to repair things. It's kind of a thing that is done, but I almost feel like it's been implemented because it's just a thing that it's done, because the reality of what happens is you get stuff broken way too quickly. Very specifically, again, when you're attempting bosses over and over again. You reach the point where everything is broken, and now you have to go back to town, pay a load of gold to repair it, and then come back. So all the durability system has added to your experience is a time break to force you to go spend money you'd rather spend on other things to then come back and continue doing the fun thing that you are wanting to do. Now... Inherently, I don't think losing durability for fully dying is a bad thing. That is a fair punishment for failure uh, that will make you be a little bit more careful in how you approach fights and not throw your life away to kill enemies. My issue comes from losing durability from taking damage from enemies from fall damage and the slow crushing of your gear that that entails. Because I had an experience in a cave of a parkour puzzle where I kept falling because, you know, it's not easy the first time when you don't know exactly where the platforms are. And by the time I was done, I was running through the place completely naked and at the mercy of any given enemy because all of these deaths through fall damage had broken all of my gear and that just felt really shit. And that's a shame. It really, really is. I think the intended reason that durability exists in the state that it's in is a fair and noble reason. I just think it's too severe. You need to not take durability damage from taking damage or taking fall damage especially, and it should just be when you fully, completely die as a more finality punishment, and that way if you're trying to progress an area that's way too high above you, you can't just get through it by, you know, throwing yourself repeatedly at enemies and hoping to kill one per life because you'll drain all your money in repairs, but then you also feel a little bit better about exploring somewhere you are suited for, attempting a boss you are suited for, and not having your gear constantly 
destroyed, which just is a, you know, a chore to go deal with before returning to the fun. So, that's kind of the two big ones for me. Oh, and another one is fall damage is way too severe. You shouldn't be able to leap off everything and be fine, of course, because that might break some levels and how you're supposed to traverse them, but the relationship between height and damage is very stern. And with the perspective that we have here, it can be sometimes quite tricky to judge the actual depth of something. And look, let's just say that I have died about 50 times since starting No Rest for the Wicked post early access. I have died to fall damage about 45 of those times. So, it might just be me, but I think a little bit more lenience in that regard would be nice, and it certainly is something I've seen other people have troubles with too, so at least perhaps it might not just be me, and is certainly worth mentioning. Of course, I do want to touch on performance. I have personally not had any issues whatsoever, but I also have a ridiculous setup, of course, because this is my job, and a lot of other people are reporting various issues. That is completely fair enough, but again, it's early access. There definitely is a minimum bar where it should work to an acceptable level so people can, you know, experience it and provide the feedback needed. And it seems like a lot of people are struggling to reach that point, so it's definitely something that I should mention. But I'm also sure it's something that is already actively being worked on and addressed, even as you hear these words. Then there's just a couple little sort of mini gripes that I think would really help, but aren't crazy. The inventory could just do with more slots. Yes, when you kill major bosses, when you have major events, you can upgrade the amount of slots you have for something. An extra equipable weapon slot, five extra resource slots in your inventory, another accessory slot, and so on and so forth. And eventually, throughout the progress of your game, you'll probably end up with more slots than you ever need. But early game, it does feel really, really kind of restrictive. On top of the fact that when you go store various resources, in your storage chest, you can't access those resources while at the smithy, while at the town upgrading guy. You have to go get them out of your chest and be carrying them to him. That's an issue. Every facility in Sacrament should be able to pull resources from any given storage chest in Sacrament that your resources are in, because... Why would it not? There's no advantage to making you go retrieve them and then walk back to the NPC. It's just kind of needless busy work. That feels like something that perhaps is just an innocent oversight, like no one had that, oh yeah, obviously thought, and should be simple to just kind of toggle it on, but it definitely is a little bit worthwhile speaking about. Just little quality of life things like that. Another big one for me is when you die, you should get a choice to respawn either at your last whisper that you touched or the one closest to you. I have been exploring a while and realized I haven't touched the closest whisper that I've already unlocked because I've been there before, died, and then get sent back across the zone when where I want to be is the whisper that was right next to me when I died anyway, and that just feels a little bit, ugh, oh, okay, off we go. Again, a minor thing, but one that I do think is certainly worth addressing. And that kind of sums up what I mean with the IRPG stuff getting in the way of the soul stuff. The actual combat, the boss fights, the level exploring, the design, everything is great. And then you're hit by durability, by having to craft heals, by having to manage an inventory that is too limited in space by gathering resources and managing them, and then suddenly you're like, okay, I've got to go deal with that and play that side of the game, which as a concept is brilliant, and it's not something I want to go away because it's a beautiful blend unlike anything else. I absolutely, and I cannot stress this enough, a door that I can go out, chop down trees, mine ore, go back to town, give that lumber and ore to a dude who will improve the buildings in Sacrament visually and functionally. Oh my god! 
I can uh, build facilities in my house that I can buy in the city to both make my life easier and have a, a unique home that I've designed. Yes, please. That kind of grindy resource customizability on the back end of a game with souls like proper, impactful, skillful, rewarding combat? Oh, where has this been all my life? I think there is something here and I just think the blend needs to be a little bit tweaked and I think there just needs to be a slightly less aggressive ARPGingness that is getting in the way of the expression of the combat. Being able to have gear with stats and random drops and rarities and weapon arts that you can swap in and out with the rune attack system, but apply that to a Souls-like combat system, that is genius. It works so well. It's actually really fun to do an RPG, ARPG-esque build like you would in a Diablo game, but then apply it to a Souls combat system. It makes you think, wow, why has no one done that before? It's simply uh, the fine art of getting those systems to play nice with each other in a way that neither makes the other not as fun as it could be and while also maintaining each other's well actual relevance and presence and I don't envy Moon Studios what they've done here is really impressive and I think with time and feedback that balance is going to be achieved and we are going to have something that is and continues to be a ridiculously special game so that's kind of my initial thoughts now that I've dug really deeper into it, and I would love to know how you guys are thinking too. For now then, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh, goodbye.